For the Car Design News Production Car of the Year Award, here are the cars from 10th place down to the winner. At 10 came the Chevrolet Corvette Stingray C8. At 9, Mustang Mach-E. In 8th place, the Byton M-Byte. At 7th, Aston Martin DBX. 6th place went to Lotus Evaya. At 5, VW's ID3. 4th place, Polestar 2. 3rd place, Porsche Taycan. 2nd place went to Honda E. And the Car Design News Production Car of the Year Award winner is Land Rover Defender. Amazing. When we saw the Defender at Frankfurt last year, and it was surrounded by a scrum of photographers, bibliographers and journalists, we knew it was making waves. But the full scale of what the design team at Land Rover had achieved became more apparent as the show ended, and we got to look more closely at what they'd achieved with the design. Car launches don't make me nervous, but the Defender launch did, because the Defender is so loved and loaded with cultural meaning. Striking the balance between heritage and the future, Defender hit the mark perfectly, and our judges agreed. I'm delighted to now introduce Professor Jerry McGovern, OBE, Chief Creative Officer Land Rover, to accept the award for Production Design of the Year. Jerry, could you join us? Hello. Hello, congratulations. Thank you very much. It's uh, an absolute honour. Quite heavy, isn't it? Nice and solid, like that car. Thank you. It really is a testament. Um, it doesn't surprise me, and, and the Defender came out as a clear winner. Sometimes it's not so clear. Um, there isn't that much in the votes, but Defender really was streets ahead of any of the other cars. The judges held it in very high regard, as do we. Um, I wonder if we could um, perhaps go through a couple of questions. If anybody from the audience has got any questions, um, if you type them into the, the questions panel, I'll ask them to Jerry. But we could, if we could start off, as a car designer, how did you manage the challenge of blocking out such a well-loved original? I don't think it was really a case, case of the block. It, it, our design philosophy is always recognise our past, but don't be harnessed by it. You know, we've, we've got the Defender, we've also got a Range Rover, which is probably equally as sort of um, peerless, for want of a better description. Um, one thing I was very firm on was that we should not create something that had a retro, a retrospective view of the past. For me and the team, it was really about, by the way, I accept this trophy on behalf of the team. As everybody listening knows, designing a car is a team effort, it's a multidisciplinary task. Um, but our view was that if, if Defender had been replaced through a normal cycle, say every 10 years, which is 
probably more than a normal cycle. What would that car be today? And, and so, you know, that was a big jump for us. And it was really about trying to capture the essence of what that car represented in the past, not so much in its design, but in, it, in its character. Because, you know, our, our philosophy generally is to design cars that uh, are thoroughly modern and contemporary, and they're they have to be relevant for today. Um, and remember, this vehicle will sell to a lot of people who don't know anything about the previous Defender. So it, it was about creating that balance. Clearly, we wanted the traditionalists to look at the car and say, you know, that's it, we love it. But you're not going to take everybody with you. Um, that's true, but actually I think you did take quite a lot of traditionalists with you, which which was one of the things that made me quite nervous in the build-up to it. Um, by the way, I, by, the way I was, by the way, you said you were quite nervous at Frankfurt when we revealed it. Um, you were probably more nervous than me because I was absolutely convinced that, you know, this vehicle was right and I think it can bear any critical, you know, any learned critical uh, critique for want of a better description in terms of what this car represents both in its design and its engineering. Yes. Moving on to the next question that I've got for you, how do you balance the form and function when designing such a vehicle as a Defender? Interestingly, on Defender, they worked in harmony because this vehicle had to be um, the toughest Defender we've ever created. It had to have supreme off-road, all-terrain capability. So to, to have that all-terrain capability, it needs to have prerequisites like short front and rear overhangs, as to ha have a high sill for departure angle. So in a way, that helped the design, because most designers will know when you've got really short overhangs, not on every design, but on a lot of designs, that can help the character. And it also forced us to do things that you wouldn't necessarily do on maybe more conventional SUVs, which was to introduce this sheer verticality at the rear, which of course helps maintain that all important off-road capability um, for that departure angle. So for us, the you know the design, the form, and the function were in, were in harmony with each other. Really, there, was, there wasn't there wasn't too much. Um, sort of fighting going on between the designers and engineers. Not that we have that anymore anyway. We have an engineering team that are hell-bent on delivering our designs. Um, another question um, that we've, we've had is, how do you deal with the gap between ideal and reality? Listen, what I think as designers, we have to remember that we are, we are commercial designers, we're industrial designers, and we're not designing for ourselves, we're designing for for our customers ultimately, and also for a, for a business. So that it, it is always about balance. But having said that, we at Land Rover are very lucky in that we are, we have a situation where design is accepted as an equal partner with all the other disciplines within the business, and it's well respected. And if you're going to achieve great design, that doesn't just start with design. It has to be at the top of the business in terms of making sure that the architectures, the platforms that, that are created by the business allows you to do, deliver great design. Because we all know great design starts with optimum volumes and proportions. And if, if you're working on an architecture that won't deliver those fundamentals, then it doesn't matter, no matter how good the surfaces and the detail and all those other things are, it will never be optimal. So we are fortunate in that respect. And I think, you know, that decision for businesses, do they want to become design leaders or do they want to create mainstream vehicles? Because they're two polarizing things. And in terms of your investment and the way you approach the development of your architectures, your whole strategy is different depending on what that vision is. 
and you know I see lots I can see you know I and, and and it's not the fault of the designers I can see lots of designs out there that have been compromised because of that fundamental issue of, of architectures not being conducive to, to deliver optimum proportions and I, I feel for a lot of the designers out there because they know who they are or what those companies are um, we are very fortunate that with people like Mr. Tata, who's, you know, we're owned by Tata, totally understand what design is about and how it delivers the, the ability to create a company that is highly desirable and doesn't create just, com just commodities. That was a long answer, wasn't it? Sorry about that. <laughs> Great answer. <laughs> um, which or what is the designer choice for your new Defender? It's right there on the on my right no hang on <laughs> this side <laughs> no, there it's there it's that one i was getting confused about what's behind me um for me it's the it's the three door version um in the pangea green because it's a modern interpretation of of the original greens that we had at land rover um i love the fact that it's got a center seat I'm, I'm planning if we can go there this summer or late summer to drive to the south of France in, in a three door and I'll be able to take my dog Teddy who's looking forward to sitting in that centre seat because he's always trying to get out the front screen anyway. Um, listen, I, I love both the three door and the five door equally. I think they're both optimum in terms of their proportions. They're incredibly durable. They do what they said on, on, the, on the tin really they're a tribute to the the great engineering the great engineers and the designers that have worked really uh, strongly together to, to develop this and um, I, I did a video yesterday for um, for our customers in in America who, uh, who are just starting to get their cars delivered and remember the Defender hasn't sold in in America for quite a few years now and you know I said to them that um, they're probably looking, really looking forward to getting this vehicle as, mu as much as I am. I'm absolutely convinced that when they spend time with it and live with it, they will grow to love it. And, you know, for me, design has the ability to enrich people's lives. And, and that's what it's all about. And you only do that by creating vehicles that are truly compelling. And I'm not saying just Land Rover does that. There's lots of other companies that do that too. But vehicles that resonate on, emotion, on an emotional level with the consumers, the ones that elevate themselves above the ordinary. If you've got time, we've had a few more questions um, come in, one of them relating to um, your choice that you just made, actually, which is two-door cars are a rarity nowadays. I'm assuming the three-door version, but how do you come to the decision to make the two-door version design-wise? Um, the three-door version really sets up the image of of, of the vehicle, and uh, we know there is a there's still a market out there for for three-door vehicles. Certainly, more functional vehicles uh, like this. You know, there'll be a lot of users that are don't need the extra seats in the back, for example. Um, plus the fact you've got the option of the centre seat, which harks back to the originals. Um, and it was we felt that we know there is a business opportunity for the three door there's a five door version as well and by the way this is just the start you know we, we're developing a whole family of of defenders here because if you think back to how it was originally created it's a famous poster of all these defenders or series one and series two three etc and shows the proliferations of different types of variants you could get depending on what they were being used for. That's great. And just one final question, which actually I think is quite an important one. What are the challenges to keep alive an icon vehicle? So an iconic vehicle, what are the challenges for a design department in keeping that alive? I think the word iconic is interesting because I think today it is a word that is used too liberally and um, you know, you, you hear about the new iconic when something is launched, which is a contradiction in terms because without being a professor about it, you look at the Oxford English Dictionary 
an icon is something that becomes one over time. You don't suddenly just get a medal and you become an icon. And you're certainly not one at launch. So this isn't an icon yet. Hopefully it will become one, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, but when you can honestly say the Defender did have, um, or the original Defender does have original, has iconic status, as does the Range Rover, which is now, you know, 50 years, um, was it today or yesterday? Um, so it, it takes a long time. Um, I think the important thing is when you're trying to maintain that sort of iconic status, if you like, is to recognize what the essence is, not just in the vehicle, but in the brand itself, and, and stay true to those, to that vision. Um, I make, when I talk about iconic, it, it links inextricably to, to um, equity in terms of it, its worth as, as a brand. That's why when it comes to luxury products, you can look at things that intrinsically they're the same in terms of their content, their costs, materials, and all those other things. But one is far higher in price point than another. And that is invariably because of its, its equity as a brand. And it is all about protecting that. So it's as much about what you don't do as you do do. And it's, it's about thinking about how you evolve the brand to build that equity or maintain it versus being just influenced all the time by what's going on in the market in terms of quick sales, quick cycles, you know, just creating differentiation for the sake of it when you don't actually need it. It's a bit more complicated than that, but I think for me, that's the essence of it. That's really interesting. Thank you, Professor McGovern, for joining us today and for accepting the award on behalf of the Land Rover design team. We're absolutely delighted. Thank you for joining us. And um, let's hope we get to see it somewhere yeah. before the end of the year. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Thank you again. It's, uh, it's uh, an honour to, uh, to receive such a prestigious award from yourselves, being highly, highly design literate, clearly, publication, and those are the ones that mean more to me generally. Thank you. Thank you.